This is a happy story. It involves two total strangers on opposite sides of the world, one of whom saved the other's life. John Gould joined the RCMP in 1980 and spent 27 years in GD and serious crime in Langley and Surrey, BC. He retired in 2007, and the following year, he learned he had a rare form of blood cancer. And in May of 2010, I was advised that uh, my last resort was a bone marrow transplant. And they gave me a life expectancy of three years, so I had to find a donor. Bone marrow is the soft, spongy tissue inside some of your bones. It contains stem cells, which can turn into several other types of cells, including blood cells. Certain blood diseases damage these bone marrow stem cells, and a stem cell transplant is required. In this case, the donor's stem cells must genetically match those of the recipient. A match for John could not be found locally. They put me in the Canadian bone marrow registry. I couldn't find a match, and then they entered me into the international bone marrow registry, and I just waited until I could find a donor. Uh, my disease uh, was progressing to the point where I had to go in for apheresis. So every two weeks I have to go to a BGH for four hours and they cleanse my, my blood and continue with the chemotherapy and that was what my life was going to be like until I found a donor. Meantime, 5,000 miles away in a small village in Germany, a young woman named Suzanne was fighting leukemia. She desperately needed a bone marrow donor and every eligible person in the village got tested hoping to help. A 19-year-old boy, Sebastian Obermeyer, was one of them. And so I decided to, to go to a registration to become a donor, or to get a donor. And uh, so I get in the database, and uh, after a couple of months, I get a letter, and it's saying, yeah, we have a match in Canada, and uh, we need your help. And so I decided to, yeah, I had this guy, or this person, I don't know anything, but the only thing I know is uh, it's from Canada. I got a call from the Vancouver General Hospital transplant coordinator, advised me they found a match for me in Germany. It wasn't a perfect match, it was a 9 out of 10, but they said that this is the closest I was going to get, and they had to go with it. The donor apparently was getting prepped to uh, have his stem cells harvested. You needed three injections for a period for seven days and after that you go to the hospital and they connected you to a machine and uh, from the left arm the blood goes out of the machine and to the right arm it goes back and that's for four hours and then you finish. It's not painful, it's, it's easy and um, they were getting me ready for the transplant and I received it was three or four days of high dose chemotherapy to kill all the cancer cells in my body which rendered me with no immune system at all. Because the patient has received his or her chemotherapy and or radiation during that time, uh, the cells have to get there. If the cells do not get there, then the patient obviously, his or her marrow has been, has been destroyed by the chemotherapy uh, and eventually, uh, frankly, that individual would die of, of bone marrow failure. On September the 29th at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, a courier arrived from Europe with my stem cells. I landed at Vancouver International Airport and 45 minutes later I'm getting a life-saving stem cell transplant. A few years later, with Sebastian's permission, John was given his donor's contact information and he arranged for Sebastian to fly to Vancouver. He wanted to personally thank the young man who saved the life of a complete stranger the same age as his father. A little bit wired because you you don't know you don't uh, you didn't know this this person 
and then you save this life and it's, it's good feeling. There's an interesting twist to this story. I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for this 21-year-old uh, girl from this little village in Germany who has leukemia. And every eligible person in their village, including Sebastian, went and got tested. And unfortunately, they, they couldn't find a match for her and she died the day before Christmas. But had they not had that drive for her, Sebastian wouldn't have been, I'm sure he probably would never have gotten tested. They had no reason to. And that's the point. Lives are being saved because people register in bone marrow registries. It's the only way matching donors can be found. And you could save a life just by joining a registry like Sebastian did. As time has gone by, we've recognized two particularly important things. Number one, for reasons which are purely related to uh, immunology and not to anything else, there is no doubt that young male donors have the best outcomes for transplant. The second point, of course, is that as the world becomes increasingly multi-ethnic, it's important to recognize that it is within those ethnic groups that we are most likely to find potential stem cell donors. It's easy to register in Canada. Go to the website onematch.ca and read the guidelines. If you think you qualify, take the knowledge test. You could be the match that saves a life. Uh, the process is really that you swab the inside of your cheek um, and then that is sent off and from the DNA, from the genetic material of the cells from the cheek, uh, that information can then be stored in the computer. So it's important to recognize that signing up for the registry now is a easy, uh, painless process. Uh, one of the things I do in my spare time is uh, teach medical students at UBC and of course uh, medical students like police officers fit the demographic exactly. They're all young, healthy. Uh, um, and 50% of them are males uh, and, and of multiple ethnic groups. And uh, it's interesting that they, like the RCMP, do a drive every year uh, during the year. The medical school does a drive to try and encourage all of them to sign up as well. And again, the process now has become extremely easy uh, for the individual to do.